You're watching Two Button Crew. The daily show for Nintendo fans. We're gonna get that, are you guys married again? Yeah. Comment. We're not, we're married, to, well we are married, just not to each other. Yep. We both have wives. And speaking of wives, your wife suggested this topic. Oh, well, she's a genius. So we're happy to make episodes off of suggestions, especially if we're married to you. So yes. keep that in mind. So get married to us. Yes. Oh, AKA subscribe to us. <laughs> That's really I, I, I don't want to equate <laughs> subscription to marriage. I think that's doing a little bit of a disservice, but undervaluing marriage. Yeah. Maybe. Okay. Maybe a little bit. So the suggestion from your wife was, what are the games that we would love to see localized? Yes. Come, come to America. Mm -hmm. Number one, Bit Generations Coloris. Uh, this title intrigues me because the bit trip games the uh other games that have bit in it mm -hmm. like the uh picto bits and stuff mm -hmm. i love that type of game so this is a puzzle game uh, it was for the ds no game it, boy it was for the game, game boy games. advance and it's a very simple color like match theory game mm -hmm. but uh the reason that it's called coloris is because it's a combination of the word color and tetris and it's kind of tetrisy Genius. and it's uh, an equally addictive video game so this of course, sounds really cool. I mean this isn't gonna be like at the top of people's lists but it's mm. one that I would have loved to play you know yeah it looks pretty awesome yeah when I thought of games because there's a lot of games that haven't been localized mm -hmm. um, when it came to ones that I was thinking of that I'd want to play one of the ones that surprised me that it even existed was Mario Party Arcade it's an arcade machine. Okay, it is. You do get to play against six people. It's an uh -huh. arcade machine where there's room for six people. You get to play Mario Party. That's super cool. That is super cool. The one thing that I'm thinking, though, is that the lines for this game <laughs> must have been ridiculous. Unless there was a quick way of playing Mario Party or for just mini games or something. Well, keep in mind that the game length is going to be the quarter. So yeah, that's it's true. probably shorter, which... Would be good for everybody, so. Hey, you just rhymed. Quarter with shorter. Shorter quarter. Shorter quarter. Make your arcade game shorter, get more quarters. And I, I think that's what people do nowadays. I would love to see, or harder. I would love yeah. to see Rhythm Tengoku, and it's pretty much the prequel to Rhythm Heaven, the USA version that we got for DS. And that was a really cool game. It got me into the mm -hmm. series. It came out at the same time as the DSi. So it was nice, like, good-looking game to go along with the good-looking handheld and everything. Um, but it was preceded by Tengoku, mm -hmm. which uh, was Japan only for the Game Boy Advance skin. And um, Rhythm Heaven's a very, like, WarioWare style game. Mm -hmm. And I think, like, the most popular or one of the best, maybe even the best, uh, WarioWare game was on the Game Boy Advance. So I think we're really missing out by not having access to this one. You're talking about Twisted? Uh, yes. And Mini Micro Games also oh, okay, started on yeah. the Game Boy Advance. Yes. So. Yeah. I remember you playing this game and you being really good at it and it was very difficult. So. <laughs> Wasn't I playing it while you were like trying to play NES and I had the volume up and stuff? I think so, yeah. I was, and we were up in that nasty loft that was like 5,000 degrees. <laughs> yeah. Yes. We had like three fans up there. I'm really hoping I didn't leave my NES up there. I, I, hope I don't didn't. even know where it might be. NESs are getting more expensive. Mm -hmm. That's weird. So this is a game called Joy Mech Fight. Okay. And you play as this guy, uh, Sukapon. And basically mm. it's a fighting game for the NES or the Famicom, I should say. It wasn't brought to America. It's probably a play on the word sucker punch. Probably, probably is. And so... You're welcome. This game has the exact same story as Mega Man. Really? Like, I watched a video of like, the intro to this game. Uh -huh. It's literally the same thing. It even has like a character select screen. Rip you, off. You, yeah. Except for the gameplay is nothing like Mega Man, so. Mm. But everything else is the exact same story as Mega Man. Well, that's a good start. But it looks like it's a lot of fun, yeah. and uh, from what I hear, it was pretty good. Nice. Fighting game on the NES, you don't get mo many of those. Yeah. 
So I'd like to play the Space Invaders Virtual Collection. Talk about this. The Space Invaders Virtual Collection was uh, by Taito, and it was actually a Virtual Ooh. Boy game. So it was a it was a spin, <laughs> a spin on the classic Space Invaders gameplay, where they're actually coming towards you instead That's of like down awesome. at you. So every time we talk about the Virtual Boy, we've been telling Nintendo to please put them on the 3DS and. Wouldn't that be cool to have a glasses-free 3D Space Invaders game where they're coming at you and you have to shoot at them before they smash, like, into you, in front of your face? Yes. That is cool. And then suck all your life force out. Yeah. So, another game that didn't come to America was Murasame Castle. And it came out... I've always said that, Murumasa. Uh, Yes. Oh, and that's also another Japanese word. Just different. Okay. But Thank this you. this game came out on the Famicom in Japan, mm-hmm. and it came out after The Legend of Zelda. Okay, and you guys will recognize this from Nintendo Land, right? The yeah, mm-hmm. the siphon mm-hmm. the Ninja Stars. But it one of the reasons why it didn't do well is because it came out after The Legend of Zelda, and it was very similar. Mm. If you look at screenshots of the game, it doesn't look as good graphically as okay. The Legend of Zelda, so it wasn't as appealing. But still, having another Legend of Zelda-like game on the NES, yeah, I wouldn't complain. So they put them out in the wrong order. Yep. It's interesting that it made it into Nintendo Land because it is Nintendo Land, of course, or at least worldwide, and it featured one of the twelve games being a Japan-only thing. So yeah. That was it was cool that it got a little bit of excitement. So there's hope. Speaking of excitement, I'm really good at these. Uh, <laughs> yeah. Segues. Uh, Excite Bike Bun 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 Mario Battle Stadium Bun Bun I bet you that's what the, why they picked that Well, I, it's partially in this list Because Bun Bun is in the title And that's funny uh, I like Excite Bike games um, But here's what's cool It's a downloadable Satellaview video game That was only in Japan For the Super Famicom So the Satellaview was an add-on Yes for the SNES that let it connect to the internet. Mm -hmm. So I think this uh, was probably barely ever played. I mean, of all the Nintendo fans, you take only the ones that are in Japan, only the ones that had the SNES, and only the ones that bought this uh, add-on and downloaded this game. So this is probably like a largely untouched Excite Bike game that's just hiding in the shadows of history. Basically a Mario Kart game. Like this was the first Mario Kart game with motorcycles. Right, that's an important thing to note is that it was like an adaptation of Excite Bike featuring Mario characters and it had coins and you could get invincibility and stuff. So probably a more fun version of Excite Bike. Yeah, Yeah. awesome. Um, I'm just gonna mention these games because we know about them. Mm but we didn't get them. Mother 3, we've not got Mother 3. I never got into the Mother series. I'm not a huge RPG fan, but I know that a lot of people really love that series, but we never got that game. We never got, but we've gotten other ones in the franchise. Yeah. Like that's something like the fan base is here already. Yes. But fans are translating stuff yeah. for them. Exactly. Sin and Punishment, we got Star Successor, which mm-hmm. We've talked about it and it makes no sense and it doesn't look very good at all, <laughs> but it plays really well. Yeah. And then there's certain Fire Emblem games that weren't localized and are not going to be localized, right. apparently, that we know of. Some weird um, crossover, I think, with the Shin yeah. Megami Tensei series. So a couple other honorable mentions. Uh, everything with Tingle in the name. Yeah. That was the weird tingle games given away uh, like Club Nintendo and stuff or sold only in Japan. There was a uh, color changing Tingles Love Balloon Trip. Yes, and, and that title intrigues me. Tingles Wonderful Rupee Land or whatever. Fresh, Rosie freshly, freshly picked. picked Rosie Rupee Land or yeah. something like that. Let's not say words that start with P when we're looking at each other <laughs> in the future. Yeah. Uh, the last one is Luigi's Mansion Arcade. So another arcade game, and I think this just has like the coolest uh, control scheme. So the game has a vacuum-like controller with two buttons, one for the light and one for the vacuum. So shaking the controller sucks in the ghosts. So imagine, like we never got the motion-controlled Luigi's Mansion game. We played it with a GameCube controller and on a 3DS, and those are both great games. 
But what about the Wii with the pointer or Seriously. this arcade game where you are holding a vacuum? Yeah. That's cool. And you can, you got to like tug them in and stuff. Um, Genius. It's got really pretty artwork on the sides. So. Why you know? I know. It's pretty new too. It's like 2014. We'd, we'd love one here. Yeah. I think that has to do with what we talked about before with like the death of the arcades and mm -hmm. stuff. It's, they're still popular in Japan, but not as much here. Yeah. So. I just have to plan a little airplane trip over. Just so we can play some of these games. Yeah. BS. Legend of Zelda. <laughs> <laughs> now, we talked. We're still talking about the death of arcades. <laughs> no, no I, there's no transition there. BS. Legend of Zelda. Mm-hmm. Now we talked about this to Teleview games, and basically, you could download Legend of Zelda games like it's cool. once a week or once a day for a week or something like that. Like hmm. they came in episodic bursts. That's pretty cool. You download them and then you turned on. I can't remember if it was the, the TV or the radio. I think it was the radio. Yeah. Um, and so like you're listening to the radio. <laughs> help you through the game as you're playing it as everybody in japan not in the world in japan is playing this game you're wow. all playing through this quest that you've downloaded from the interwebs hmm. must have felt like living in the future yeah we uh, don't have this nowadays and and what does bs stand for um i don't know big, I, big stink big stink <laughs> i i honestly could not find out okay. what bs stands for well, maybe it means something in Japan. I think Nintendo should go back to this for Zelda. Instead of delaying yes. every Zelda game that comes out for years at a time, just put out like a third. Yep. A Triforce per game. Play it as, as you go. Suspenseful endings. Genius. Episodic. Let's do it. Let's go. Ah, Nintendo. So forward thinking and then abandoning it. Yeah. Why? Yeah. Well, these are games that have only come out in Japan, and we'll be back later this week to talk more about North America, Europe games, all that good stuff. Yes. So. Thanks for watching. Thank you for watching. Thank you for liking and commenting and subscribing, if that's what you do. And please share if you liked what you saw. Remember to marry us. Yes. See you next time. <laughs> Signing off.